Hello everyone and welcome to the 10th uh, video in the Thermodynamics video series. Today I'm going to be discussing the solid-liquid vapor relationships. Um, specifically I'm going to be showing the pressure versus specific volume plots. Um, and in these plots I hope to identify you know, how the solids and the liquids behave in uh, two, two different ways. So there's, when you go from a solid to a liquid, there's two ways that it can... Uh, Sorry, let me rephrase that. So if we go from a liquid to a solid, there's two way, two things that can happen. You can have a liquid that, it, or the molecules can expand. So let's say liquid turns into a solid. Okay, you can have two ways. Okay, you can have expansion of the molecules, such as like H2O, water. Okay, you can have contraction. And in this video I'll be showing uh, the two different um, pressure versus specific volume plots for the different scenarios that you could have. Okay, so first let's take a look at the contraction plot. Okay, and we'll draw the pressure for the specific volume axis. And from last time, um, as you, if you remember, the the dome kind of looks something like that. And in this section, we had uh, compressed liquid. In the se or section number two, we had a uh, liquid vapor mixture, and here we had superheated vapors. Okay, and I'm not going to write this down because we discussed it in our previous videos. Please refer to those if you don't understand. Okay, but, um, so if you, if you can envision from this, you see that as you go towards the right hand side, you have a, uh, a change in phase from liquid to a gas. You know, gas typically has, uh, there's more energy, the molecules are moving, vibrating faster, so you have a higher specific volume. So if you're a solid and your solid contracts as, you know, your, your liquid contracts as it turns into a solid, you would envision that the, specific volume would go in the left hand direction when you're trying to become a solid. So I'll draw this line right here and this line. Okay. And as you went to a transition in the uh, liquid to vapor region, you also have to go through a transition to the solid region. And that's what this is right here. So I'll call this number four. So number four is a solid liquid mixture. Okay, and number five will be our solid. Okay, but what, what is actually going on down here? Okay, and what's actually going on is you can have a scenario where your solid goes directly to becoming a vapor. Okay, so that transition from a solid to a vapor directly is called sublimation. Let me write that down. Sublimation. Okay, and that is from 5 to 3. Okay, and we'll call this number 6. And in, in section number 6, what you actually have is a solid vapor mixture. Okay, and if, if you notice in, in this plot, we have a straight line, right, where I show in green. Okay, and that is called the triple line. Write that down here. And this triple line is actually where um, solids, liquids, and vapors can actually coexist. Okay, here you have your solid and vapor mixture. Here you have your liquid and vapor mixture. So here along this line, you can have all three of them uh, together. Okay, so next, let's look at the um, expanding case. Okay, and this is the case for water. Water expands as um, it turns into a solid. 
And that's why you get uh, ice floating to the top of a lake. Um, so you know you so you can walk on the ice that's on top. It doesn't sink to the bottom. If it if it uh, didn't expand and contract it, it would all sink to the bottom, and there wouldn't be any sort of uh, vegetation on the floor of the sea or, or a lake or something like that. So it's it's a it's a important concept to understand for you know life in general. This this is why we have vegetation on sea floors and things like that. So let me create this plot. Okay, and let me make the dome once again. And I'll call this number one with a compressed liquid. Two is the uh, liquid vapor mixture. Three is the superheated vapor. Okay. And we know that there's a point where you start transitioning from a liquid to a solid. Okay. But if, if you know, in the definition, it expands. Okay. Let me do the axis axis. So if you expand, you, you imagine that the specific volume is going to increase. Okay, and let me draw this with a different color. Okay, and what actually happens is something along these lines, where in this section right here, okay, you have your um, your solid. Or let me call that number four. Okay, so number four is your solid liquid mixture okay and now uh, what once you get to this point right you have a different section over here which goes into this location over here okay and this is uh, number five and number five is where you have a solid okay this, this location is where you start transitioning over to, um, this is your, I'll we'll call that number six. Number six is your solid vapor mixture. Okay, and then, you know, you go from five to uh, what, what I call here three, and that's your vapor uh, number three. Okay, and it's a little bit difficult to understand why uh, why this is happening. And what's actually happening is, you know, how do you know if you're on this side or you're on this side? You know, so if you're a liquid in here or if you're solid in this in this section, right? It's it's a little bit difficult to understand that, and that's that's dependent on the internal energy of the system. Okay, so based on what your internal energy is, it'll tell you if you are at a mixture of the solid or liquid at this position in the pressure-specific volume plot, or if you're a solid, or if you're a liquid. Okay, and it's a little bit confusing, but I have a couple diagrams at the end here, which kind of illustrate what's actually going on. Okay, and here you see the contracting case. Okay, and if you look at it in this direction, you see the pressure volume for the contracting case, and as you go to it from a liquid to a solid, you have this section here, and your volume, your specific volume decreases as you go towards the left, as you expect. And here, you can see that, as drawn by this line, that you go back out in the volume plot, or you know, pressure versus volume, as you become a solid. So here, you can have the solid. You can have, you know, on this plane, you can have the solid liquid line or solid liquid phase. And then, or you can have the liquid if you're looking at it. And there is a temperature dependency, and the temperature is actually what helps to identify your internal energy of your system, which will tell you, you know, what phase you're actually in. And the back of the book is very helpful in explaining that. But in future videos, we'll try to describe what each everything means at the end of the book and how to use the tables as well. So I hope I hope this helps you to understand um, how these different phase changes work together. There's a temperature, volume, and pressure dependency um, for all phases, and these diagrams help to show how it works, but it's not very very helpful in describing, you know, what what is the internal energy at this position over here, or, um, you know, things like that. So in future videos, we'll be discussing that in further detail, but thank you for watching this video, and I hope you, hope you enjoyed it. 
Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns in the comment section. And don't forget to like our video. Thank you.